I will give her vineyards there, and the valley of suffering for a door of hope, and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth. Rhonda Lazert Ministries welcomes you to the Door of Hope. Welcome to Door of Hope. On the subject of the presence of God, uh, last week we looked at the, uh, the regenerating presence. And perhaps we haven't thought of breaking down the subject itself of the presence of God in our lives uh, with the Hebrew scriptures as well as the New Testament understanding. I'm not sure why we don't think that way naturally because it is the creme de la creme of the Christian journey. It's the anointing that breaks the yoke. And uh, today we will look at uh, that very subject of the anointing of God in our lives. Last week we saw the presence, how it began with Moses. And he said, if your presence goes not with me, they will not know that you are with me. And it's still the same for us today. Uh, we are uh, living test testaments, living testimony of the grace and power of God, each and every one in our lives, as we have had the spirit of the living God work in our lives. And it shows up with David and Samuel. He's the little shepherd boy who sang unto the Lord. And when Samuel was looking for a new leader to replace Saul, uh, he went to Jesse's boys and the youngest, uh, the dreamer, the musician, they didn't even bother to bring him in uh, because, you know, to be honest with you, God does not look for the powerful, for the strong in themselves. He looks really for, to the downcast. So we're, uh, you know, if we have uh, negative things in our lives, it's the, uh, the climate or it's the soil in which the Holy Spirit can really take root and uh, grow. It, it's, it's said, where it's not that we're too uh, weak, it's that each and every one of us are too strong. So here's Jesse with David in 1 Samuel uh, chapter 16. And then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramal, Ramallah. So there is Samuel. He comes and he anoints David and leaves uh, because the presence of God is on this young man's life for the purposes of God. And God's ways are never our ways. His thoughts are never our thoughts. And yet we have a tendency in our modern uh, culture to try and uh, be in the driver's seat, try to manipulate it, try to make it work. Uh, and it's all to no avail. And uh, it says in Obadiah, the people that know their God shall do great exploits. And uh, one way of surely knowing God is his presence, the ways of God recorded in Holy Scripture uh, to see the acts of God. Um, Peter said at Gate Beautiful, silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. So we have in the second book of Corinthians, just to show that we're not off track somehow. It says in the second um, book of Corinthians, first chapter, but it is God who establishes us with you in Christ Jesus and has anointed us by putting his seal on us and giving us his spirit in our hearts as a first installment. Perhaps this is the most astounding scripture in the New Testament, that God has chosen us and he has, is going to establish us in Christ Jesus and he has anointed us and he has put a seal on us and given us his spirit in our hearts as a first installment. As a first installment of the spirit of grace in this precious book in 2 Corinthians, it goes on in chapter two, but thanks be to God who in Christ always leads us in triumphal procession. Through us spreads in every place the fragrance that comes from knowing him. So often we take Holy Scripture and we just sort of uh, forget that it says what it means and means what it says. 
and uh, I ran into uh, that whole subject of fragrance and the anointing oil uh, some 30 years ago. And the sad thing about it is, I, I was afraid to tell anybody. I was afraid to say that I can, there's a fragrance I set, smell on some people. I feel it myself. I had a friend come for a prayer and she said, what is that fragrance that you have in your place? It was, it was beautiful. It's a fragrance of Christ. It's not just words on a page, it's the living presence of God in our lives as we journey and walk with him. It's supposed to be uh, an everyday experience. We see that language in the book of Esther where for six months she was, and the maidens, they went through a purification process of fragrance. We see at Jesus, incense was brought, myrrh, incense, gold. Uh, this is the language of Holy Scripture. This is what we should be living and walking in and have some working knowledge of because God is leading us in triumphal procession that we might know the power of God, the glory of God upon our lives, not just for us, but that we have something to give this dying world. And when the anointing and the presence of God is there in our lives, it flows out. And again, it's not self-helps. It's not repeating something again and again and again. It's living in his presence, living with that anointing, living knowing that because Christ is there and his presence is there, that we can make it, that all will be well with us, that we can go on. And again, the people that know their God shall do great exploits. We can lift our hands and pray. We can lift our hands and extend it, praying one for another because of the very presence of God is there in our lives to minister health, wholeness, healing, whatever has need of. And it, it doesn't stay in a container, you know, like the oil we sometimes put um, symbolically. It's almost become a symbol on people who are not well. It's the very fragrance. You ever try and capture a fragrance? It's impossible. It flows out, it flows out, it flows out. And I'm so very confident of these experiences that I've had in Christ Jesus because there they are in Holy Scripture. The book of Corinthians goes on to say, such is the confidence that we have through Christ towards God. Not that we are competent of ourselves to claim anything is coming from us. Our confidence is from God who has made us competent to be ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. For the letter kills, but the spirit gives life. And then it says, Now if the ministry of death chiseled in letters on stone tablets came in glory so that the people of Israel could not gaze on Moses' face, and we've looked at that earlier, because of the glory of his face, a glory now set aside, how much more will the ministry of the spirit come in glory? For if there was a glory in the ministry of the condemnation, how much more does a ministry of justification abound in glory. When is the last time you've, you've even thought about this subject? The glory, the glory, the glory of God's presence in our lives, his precious, precious anointing that flows out, that flows out that is so very real. Uh, that night I was healed, the glory of God was there. I, I couldn't put it in a box. I, I, I didn't know how to explain it, but I knew his presence was there. I knew his anointing was there. I could smell it. He's called the Rose of Sharon. It's just not language. He's the Rose of Sharon, the Rose of Roses. And uh, I fell asleep that night and woke up uh, surprised I'd slept the night because the pain was gone and the tumor was gone. Never has it returned in 25 years. I didn't have to work my way up. Didn't have to confess it day and night until I was weary. I've gone down that path. I've gone down that path with a loved one, taking verses of scripture that I've liked, that I thought fit the uh, occasion and ending up with not so much and yet plugging in with his very presence, the anointing, knowing that is for the children of God, the people of God. Uh, the, those words, um, we have this confidence that we have through Christ towards God. And then this whole uh, book goes on to say, since then, we, since then we have such a great hope. 
we act with great boldness, not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from grazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside, but their minds were hardened indeed to this very day. Now the, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and all of us with unveiled faces see the glory of the Lord as through reflected in a mirror after being transformed into the same image from one degree to another. And this comes from the Lord, the Spirit, the Spirit of God given at Pentecost to a gift. It says, you know, if you ask for the Holy Spirit, God won't, he'll give it to you. He's not going to give you a stone. He's going to give you the Holy Spirit. He rose um, from the dead, seated at the right hand of the Father sending this dunamis of God for our lives that we may know his overcoming life, we may know his healing virtue, we may know his provision. How do you get started? I suggested last week, so simply, uh, my first encounter with it, a personal encounter, not just feeling something in a church service, but my very personal encounter happened when I lifted my hands unto God and felt his presence, felt his presence reach down and touch me and heal my heart, or at least give me the grace and the strength and the courage that I needed to go on. And it's never disappeared. You know, I floundered. I thought maybe it was just a one-time experience that you can only receive uh, in deepest need. No, it's not. We have this confidence. We have this boldness. We want to move by God's Holy Spirit and, and we receive it. My spirit I put within you. When we receive Christ as our Lord and Savior, confessing our sins, asking him to dwell within us by his Holy Spirit, he comes in and just does that. And what's needed is the release. And instead we're, as I read last week, I thought it was an interesting scripture in the book of Acts. They, they get it wrong and they start wondering when the kingdom's going to be restored, wondering when the end times are going to come, wonder when, you know, the earthquake, next earthquake. Instead, he said, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. And I give my spirit to you that you may be overcomers. Remember, there was light in Goshen. There was light in Goshen. There's always for the church of Jesus Christ. It says, when the enemy comes in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord God raises up a standard against him. And it is always not by might nor by power, but by his Spirit, that every mountain is removed. And so that morning when I woke up healed because of the very presence and healing power of God. And it, interestingly enough, that night was the first time I didn't even ask to be healed. I never thought of it. I was in his presence with my hands lifted up, so very, very high enjoying it and I remember that that's what heaven is going to be like for us when we pass on we're going to be no eye has seen nor ear has heard what God has prepared for them that love him we're going to be in the very presence of God with our hands lifted up and it's going to be glorious 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 and it's an offer to all who care to receive it whosoever will may come whosoever will may come and receive of me and I will forgive you of your iniquities. It doesn't matter. Uh, Corrie Ten Boone's line that she heard uh, in the concentration camp, which caused the death of her sister and parents. And when this uh, SS officer came to Christ and she thought it was so unjust that he could inflict such pain, pain upon not just her, but others, and the Spirit of God said, no pit is too deep that I am not deeper still. There's no need that you have that the Spirit of God has not paid a price for. And it is the anointing that breaks the yoke. Instead, we're paddling around in the self-helps category, thinking the therapy is going to help us, though there's a place for it. But there's certainly a place for the much more of Holy Scripture, much more, much more. The promises of God are much more in Christ Jesus. Going on, it says, but we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. 
We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh, so death works in us, but life in you, just as we have this same spirit of faith. As I live in them, I walk among them, says the Lord our God. I will be their people if they will be my God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And uh, I recommend First and Second Corinthians. Uh, just comb through it, dig through it as not something that has to be revised or updated, but something that has to be entered into a gift given for the people of God, the priesthood of all believers. You know, it's, it's a fact that the word of God is so, uh, it's just not read, uh, even by Christian people, and yet it holds uh, the words of life. As Peter said, where else can we go, Lord? You alone have the words of eternal life. So the call of the Spirit is always to move forward. The call of the Spirit is that our lives would not just begin with being regenerated and forgiven and then wait for, you know, death. But the call of the Spirit is that we would enter into the fullness of God with all the confidence, all the confidence, because the focus is really not us, it's him, a gift given, and we open our hands and our hearts to receive fully uh, from him. And it's, there is no, uh, there's no challenge in our lives that the Holy Spirit isn't able to simply allow us to overcome and allow us to receive. And, uh, and again, it, it seems that this very common, or not so common, but this very e easy act of living our, lifting our hands unto God, lifting them up to you and saying, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, is enough to allow us to enter in to that new and living way, the new holy of holies, so to speak, into the presence of God and be worshipers of him and that anointing that comes in that moves through our lives and through our land and through our nation to help people who are uh, really basically sitting on a park bench, hopeless and helpless, uh, caught in whatever despair that is there, whatever need that is there. And we have the words of Jesus said that I have come to give you life and life abundantly and yet we don't know how to make the connection We've heard so many of these scriptures and uh, just not making the connection. It's not working for us. And perhaps for some, you've even given up because uh, you've been there, tr tried that, and it hasn't worked. And I've been there myself. And I remember, uh, you know, standing on those verses of scripture, doing the Jericho march, anything so that I could move the hand of God. And yet I had had a dream and the dream indicated that he was not going to do what I had requested of him. It didn't matter. I, there is the sovereignty of God. There is the grace of God. My sheep hear my voice. And I should have listened to that. I should have surrendered unto that because out of it came life and life abundantly. There were no regrets for any of the parties. And yet I had been so ignorant and foolish of the ways of God uh, just grasping, trying I see myself as someone, Jesus had that long robe, and I was tugging at the skirt and, and saying, what about me, Lord? And yet God had said, come in, sup with me, uh, for I'm meek and lowly. Learn of me, and I will teach you my ways, and your anointing which abides shall be upon your life that you shall be able to handle this, that you shall be able to overcome this, that you shall be able to grow this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellency is of God 
and not of us. And, you know, I, I call it heaven on earth. Uh, I call it heaven on earth. You know, it's so much easier looking back. It certainly is easier looking back and seeing the mistakes and the uncertainty. And it's, it's odd in a way how my gut, that voice of the spirit, my sheep hear my voice, how that voice was so clear and so real. And instead of all the fretting I've done, that we do in our lives, that all I really had to do was lift my hands unto God and feel his presence, feel his anointing, knowing that the anointing of God heals, restores, removes everything that it shouldn't be there. Uh, you know, this idea of curses from whatever, ancestral curses and all that, it says we have been taken from darkness into his marvelous light. And it is the release of the anointing of God that makes a difference for us. All praise be to Jesus Christ. And we see it in the very working of David, the young shepherd boy, being called out by Samuel. And now in the New Testament, we have all may come. Whosoever will may come. We have the priesthood of all believers. Lord, we, we pray we understand that we are a peculiar people. We understand, Lord, that we are born again of your Holy Spirit, that your very presence is Christ in us, the hope of glory. We've not believed in some cunningly devised fable, but we have believed in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, a God who is not a distant God, who has sent his Holy Spirit, his very presence into our lives, given us his anointing that we might be free. And your call to all is whosoever will may come, enter in and receive fully that you might be full of his praise, that you might live truly heaven on earth by his grace and mercy. And Lord, there isn't a saint alive that has not walked with you and journeyed with you that does not say how wonderful it is, what a wonderful Lord and Savior you are, how precious and gracious you have been to this world, how gracious and precious you have been to each and every one of us. And so we lift up holy hands unto you, Lord, with the greatest thanksgiving. And we thank you that we go on by your grace and mercy to receive fully your Holy Spirit, that precious anointing that breaks the yoke. Thank you, Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Blessed assured Jesus is mine, and oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, and heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. And this is my story, this is my song. Praise Him, my Savior, all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praise Him, my Savior, all the day long. And perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side With angels descending, ring from above Echoes of mercy, whispers of love and This is my story, this is my song Praise Him, my Savior, all the day long. This is my story.
This is my song. Praise him, my Savior, all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I in my Savior, happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. And this is my story, this is my song. Praise Him, my Savior, all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praise Him, my Savior, all the day long. Praise Him, my Savior, all the day long. As we lift hands together on the prayer line, it is wonderful to feel that living presence. And we are here, uh, the lines are open throughout the week, and if you can't get us, just keep trying, because we are here to pray with you together. I like uh, continuing on with this Second Corinthians. It says, so we do not lose heart, even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day being renewed, walking in the fullness of God's Holy Spirit, being blessed of God, having our needs met uh, simply by knowing Christ our Savior, lifting our hands unto him and praying by his grace and mercy for his help, guidance, protection, blessing. God bless us, a God who is generous to all men. God bless you. Take care. I do appreciate your support. I, can't remain on air without it, and I do uh, pray for that, and I do ask you for that, perhaps partnering with Door of Hope that we might uh, simply increase. God bless you, take care, and have a great week. It is your financial gifts that allow Rhonda Lazert to remain on the air. All gifts payable to Rhonda Lazert Ministries are tax deductible. 